Look at the detail on this vase. It's the kind of scene that you might see in a Kurosawa movie. Warriors and archers practicing their skills in the pre-modern Japan of the samurai. Look at the gold leaf and how it makes the men's robes stand out. This piece was made at some point in the 1870s by the potter Miyagawa Kozan, known as Makuzu. I'm actually a historian of modern China, but I find this piece fascinating because it shows the close connections between China and Japan at a moment when the world was globalizing fast. The period when Makuzu was working was an exhilarating one for Japan, but also a contradictory one. The period known as the Meiji Restoration from 1868 to 1912 saw Japan become perhaps the fastest modernizing country in the history of the world. Law, the constitution, the army, the railways, all were adapted from the West and used to turn Japan from a relatively inward looking state to a dynamic economy which sought to become an empire. As part of its economic model, Meiji Japan sought to export huge amounts of goods. And that export market was where artists like Makuzu came in. Ironically, just at the time when Japan was modernizing so rapidly, Western collectors became immensely enthusiastic about artwork that seemed to showcase an older, more traditional Japan. So Makuzu's workshop in Yokohama produced carefully crafted pieces of pottery that harked back to the past. This Satsuma-style vase is my favourite, but the gallery here has a range of other wonderful pieces by him. A delicate green vase with a white lily picked out on it. This process of export had begun in the 18th century, but it really took off after Japan was opened to the wider world in the late 19th century. It's a small example of how broad the range of artefacts is here at the Ashmolean, and how this type of material culture can help historians like me, who normally work on texts and documents. Makusu's work symbolizes an immensely important historical moment. Like Japan, many other non-Western nations were forced into contact with the West as part of the process of globalization and colonization. But many such countries were also determined to maintain their own cultures. By producing art in the Japanese tradition, drawing on Western techniques, and then marketing it to the Western world, as well as at home, Makuzu shows how even the most authentic local work became part of the wider global economy of art.